Welcome back to the Comic Book ASM Artist. Today we're doing another comic book haul video. So, first off, we're starting with Action Comics, number 1011. And if I remember correctly, uh, basically at this point, um, both Lois and Clark are wearing disguises and spying on an organization, if I remember correctly. I'm trying to remember if it is actually Leviathan that they are infiltrating or leads them to Leviathan. But, um, and this is the book you want to read before the big Leviathan Rising special so if you're thinking about picking that up make sure you're reading action comics and it's continuing on with the uh steve epting artwork and uh bendis is writing it Next we have Spawn, number 297, and this uh, is the history of Spawn to lead into that 300, so even if you're brand new to the character, this uh, storyline encourages brand new readership to get caught up on Spawn. So and this issue has a lot of double page spreads in it. The more gritty, realistic style. And they have a lot of them that go this way too, where they're on their side. So I've really been enjoying Jason, Jason Sean Alexander's artwork. And I'm definitely looking forward to the big issue number 300. And then, uh, from what I heard, I guess that uh, Spawn has officially been announced as a DLC character on uh, Mortal Kombat 11. Next we have Detective Comics, number 1004. And I'm glad I was able to get the other half of the connecting cover. And they are going up against the Arkham Knight, which is different than the uh, Arkham Knight from the uh, video game. And I won't share too many details if um, you haven't been reading it, but the thing they revealed in the previous issue was pretty huge. Basically, they solved the mystery of who the Arkham Knight is. And it looks like this issue talks about their backstory a little bit. So it's interesting when I think about how everything's supposed to be fitting in with the year of the villain and all that stuff. It's kind of, I don't know, like something is bound to be eclipsed. I feel like the detective is telling a really good story 
but uh, since it's not the main Batman book, it's being overlooked. So if you're not reading Detective Comics, I do encourage you to pick that up. Next is uh, The Terrifics, number 16. And I am way behind on reading this series. This one, and um, I forget, there's a couple others that I'm behind on from the Age of Heroes line. Doesn't even look like they're, oh, I guess they are at the top of branding it like that. I think I'm behind on Brimstone, which is now wrapped. Terrifics, and I can't remember the other one. I know I finished uh, The Unexpected, and that was just a short series anyway. It might just be those two. So, yeah, I have no clue what's going on with this book. Just trying to round out, you know, having them all. But I thought they were all going to go to 12, so this one is still going. And even in the um, preview solicits, it's still going. So, I don't know. I think the major reason it's still going is DC has missed having like a um, sci-fi like fun team. It's it's very it has dynamics of Fantastic Four to it, with still being its own thing too. Silencer Seventeen is the next book here. I'm surprised this one hasn't wrapped either, but I know it's been um. I've really been enjoying it a lot. I'm actually current on this one. And she's basically confronting her husband here, trying to get him out of the house before something bad happens to her family. She's trying to preserve that last little bit of them while she still can. So, but he still doesn't know uh, what she does or anything like that. I believe he still thinks she's dead from the uh, theme park attack. Next we have Dick Tracy Forever. The main thing that uh, surprised me about this story is uh, the fact that uh, they just relaunched with the number one in the last month. But there's multiple stories in here. And it's not even like two stories. It's like three or four or something. It's like some of them were even just like a couple pages. So I don't know if that's just going to be how Omig formats his run on the series. Or if that's how they want to do it for the next bit. I'm not sure. So that's a little unorthodox from the modern day here. But it might kind of be a nod to, you know, Dick Tracy with it being a newspaper strip and all that. Just kind of having things more broken up. Next we have Doomsday Clock, number 10.
in this book they're continuing to um, push it along and it's supposed to line up with other elements in the DC universe but uh they're trying to do it in such a way where this story this story doesn't spoil other stories and vice versa so it's a little frustrating because we definitely want to get the whole story as fast as we can but they're trying to have an overarching effect on other titles so that's kind of what we're dealing with right now with this book Next we have the Detective Comics Annual number two. And really the big sell of this story you saw on that double page spread. This is a villain from the uh, Batman year two storyline that uh, Todd McFarlane did back in the day. So it's been a while since Batman encountered him. So that's kind of a cool thing to see what will happen with all of that. And it looks like it's just one oversized story. So that's pretty unusual too with annuals now. They seem to split things up. Next we have Ninja Turtles number 94. And this is their big city at war event, which will of course end in Ninja Turtles number 100, which is sure to be a big deal. And it is the longest running ongoing Ninja Turtles uh, series ever published. With good reason, it's got a lot of stuff going for it. There's a lot of uh, fan service and nods and there's new original elements to keep it interesting as well.
Next we have Turtles Urban Legends number 13. And this is a story from the 90s from when Image had the rights to publish the Turtles. And it definitely has lots of weird rough patches. At this point, I really don't have any clue what's going on. I am current with it, but just kind of all over the place. I guess the most recent development was uh, they learned that even though Donnie is in a uh, cyborg body, that he is no longer alive anymore. Basically, all the brain activity and everything is all the robot just kind of using his body as a bit of a husk. Next we got Heroes in Crisis number 9, and this wraps the event, which a lot of people are very unhappy with. And like I said, my favorite thing about it is the artwork. Not too big on the story. Then I believe they said that they're going to put the same creative team to do a Batman and Catwoman book, which will continue the events of Tom King's Batman after issue number 85, if I remember correctly. Because he was supposed to go to 100 at first and I guess they changed their mind or something. Next we have one that's been teased for a bit. This is a premium format book. Batman Last Night on Earth, book one. I believe it's a three part series. I could be wrong. It is a mature title, $6, it's under the black label, and this is Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's like official future ending of Batman. And a lot of the things that uh, he set up in previous arcs come to pass here I don't know if you all remember like the new 52 Batman stuff all the way and even the uh, Batman Eternal stuff but basically at one point Bruce had a fail safe machine where there would always be a Batman to avenge even if it wasn't Bruce personally it would be a clone or something like that so the Bruce in this story is the product of that machine so this isn't anywhere close to our current timeline this is way way in the future and 
And so because of that, they get to do a lot of just crazy things in it. And since it's under the black label, there's really no um, people shooting down their ideas as much. I think it's funny that they put this out before they finish the uh, Batman Damned story. But I think the last part is supposed to be on sale next month, but still, it's kind of weird. Next we have Superman the Leviathan Rising number one. This is a special. It's ten dollars and it's I think it's a hundred pages. It has a bunch of different writers and artists on it. And this is the follow-up to what's been going on in action comics. Which will lead to, this is a special before the mini-series, so go figure. And that's going to be a six-part story by Bendis and Alex Maleev. So I'm going to try to skip ahead here and show off some of the different art while doing my best not to spoil it, of course. There's a weird Jimmy Olsen story in here. Super Girl, I know he's been using her a lot, and um, Bendis has been using her in the ongoing Superman title quite a few times. I think those were all the different artists for that. Next we have Drawing Blood. And this was a Kickstarter that Eastman had done with, uh, let's see, David Avalon, I believe, and uh, Ben Bishop. And it's a little bit autobiographical, but not really. It's more or less about a comic creator and his wild exploits in creating his own characters so Ben Bishop is the artist here and Eastman was kind of like a collaborator because even the scripting I see Evelyn there but uh, this is a mature book even though at first glance it might not be although this cover kind of makes it look a little more Mature, and this was the Eastman variant cover. Next page is mature. There is um, adult language and nudity in here, so heads up for that, which I didn't even know when I got this. I just wanted to see what Eastman was up to. But I do like the art style too. 
and the uh, cover stock is really strange it's just really shiny almost like plastic sort of a hybrid I don't know Have the uh, companion piece to that, the radically rearranged Ronin rag dolls. They're all like cats. And this is the Eastman cover here. And this is the um, the comic that is created in Drawing Blood. And there they are, right there. And I'm not sure if part of this is set in their regular story of Drawing Blood or not as well. I'm not sure. But I think Drawing Blood is actually a miniseries too. With this is a one-shot if I remember. I could be wrong though. But I wasn't sure if this was even going to be in my shop. Because it wasn't on their announcements list even though I had uh, pre-ordered it. Sometimes things happen with ordering with diamond and all that good stuff, so. But I wanted to show you all. I guess the one thing was in the other one. There are a couple Eastman pages in the Drawing Blood book. So, yeah, go pick both of those up. Well, that's going to do it. Didn't have a big haul this week, but I just wanted to show you guys what I got. As always, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I was also uh, recently a part of a Kickstarter that just launched. It's an anthology called uh, Werewolves and Unicorns. It's basically about a bunch of random myst mystical creatures. And uh, there's 28 different artists who did the 100 Days of Comics successfully that got uh, four-page short stories, and I am one of those. So I have a little four-page story in this nice big book. So I'll leave a link to that below, and uh, just check that out. And uh, let me know what you want to see. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, make sure to share it. Let's grow this channel. And uh, you all have a super slumber. Thanks.